This is the Builders Business Success Podcast for builders who want to attract more quality clients who aren't price focused, eliminate cash flow pressure, and get paid for every quote. Here's your host, Mick Hall. Hey, folks, welcome to another episode of Builders Business Success Podcast. We're currently on holidays from the lives, but want to make sure you're still getting the podcast, something to listen to, something to think about. Uh, and hopefully have a laugh about in this particular uh, episode replay, we were interviewing Professor Mark Morehouse, a.k.a. Lee Farnell from Western Australia. Uh, super funny, but very, very insightful at the same time. And uh, why I love Professor Mark Morehouse is that there is a real art to be able to entertain first and educate second. So you have a laugh, but you'll also learn something. So let's listen to our conversation with Professor Mark Morehouse. Now, we've got Professor Mark Morehouse, and he's based in New York, and he's in Australia working on um, investor relations with some of his Fortune 500 clients and with the Australian federal government on yet to be announced key industry development innovation strategy. It all sounds very highbrow, highfalutin, high level stuff that I, I probably don't understand. So we might get that explained to me. He is a person, USA Today, called a genius in smart business for the 21st century. The Wall Street Journal wrote him as one of the world's gurus in guerrilla marketing. Marketing USA described him as the showman of the business innovation or business innovation success. He's uh, got a PhD in marketing business uh, from Harvard, uh, a master's degree in human psychology. I nearly couldn't read my own writing there. <laughs> um, from the University of Minnesota and an engineering degree from the University of Washington. He is visiting uh, professor on marketing and strategic innovation at the London Business School and consults to the International Olympic Committee. And he's here with us on the Builders Business Success Podcast. I'd like you to meet Professor Mark Morehouse. Thank you for uh, speaking with us. Well, thank you, Mick, for having me. Uh, you're a great guy. Uh, we've met a number of years ago, and uh, it's just fantastic that you'd, you'd have me back on. I'm here in Australia uh, on a, a number of things I can't talk about, but obviously your, your Australian Prime Minister recently uh, had a relationship with uh, the President of France, France, <laughs> France, France, and, uh, you know, I, I've... I said, if the contract is not being met, if the milestones are not being met, do not get those submarines. <laughs> and so we've done that, and I, I, I'm not going to claim credit for it. The, the French, we've got some upset frog legs over there <laughs> right now. But overall, Australia, you've made the right decision. And I'm saying Morehouse... I've been a little bit behind that. My my hand is almost up Scott Morrison's back in regard to this. But I'm I, between myself and our president, uh, Joe Joseph Joe Joe Biden. When he can remember his own name, uh, you know, uh, you've got to make decisions, M Mickey boy. You know, you've you've got to make decisions. Sometimes those decisions are are, t are are tough decisions, but you've got to make them. And we've made them, and it'll be in the best interest for Australia. It'll be in the best interest for the USA, and that's the best interest for the world. So that's all we're really concerned about. Now, I'm just noticing in your background there that yeah. you've got world tour dates. And uh, I think there's, we spoke, uh, we had a podcast called Small Business Smart Solutions, and you were very uh, gracious enough to uh, grace us with your presence on that podcast some years ago. I think it was before this world tour. So, uh, I mean, you're all over the place teaching people how to build better businesses. And that's why we've got you on this show, because we need to learn how to build better businesses. My thoughts are, and I want your thoughts on this, is, is the, the primary thing that needs to change for a business to be successful is the mindset of the business owner. How important is mindset when it comes to success? 
Well, Mickey Boy, as you can see, uh, the tour is called Mad for More. Mad, Mad for More. And that is the whole theme of the work that I do, is I want people to go mad for more, 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 more business growth, more customer service, more cash flow, more marketing, more, more, more. And when I say mad, I mean make a difference, make a difference. Now, I'm going to go a, a, a fraction far because when we're talking mindset, the whole principle behind mindset starts with the fact that you are born and then one day you're going to die. And I hate to say that because, but it's, a, it's an absolute truth. You're born, and then you're going to die. And there's this gap in between called life. And you have to decide to make the most of this thing called life. Now, some people have a mindset they think they're going to live forever, that they've got all the time in the world. The fact of the matter is, you don't have all the time in the world. And the beautiful thing about the work you do, Mickey Boy, and the work I do, but you particularly, because you deal with builders. I love that concept. Building. Building. I was just talking to my business partner this morning, and I, we were talking about the fact that when you do a building, when you do a building, you have to have solid, deep foundations. Is that true, yes or no? That is... Yes. Yes. And, and if you have weak, insubstantial foundations, then the building, what, is in, unstable, lacks integrity. So when we're talking mindset, the mindset is, in fact, the very foundation of the growth for the future. And yet what frustrates me and why I talk about going mad is people can go through their whole education kindergarten, primary school, secondary school, college, university, postgraduate, and not one minute is spent on mindset. Sorry, I've got to control myself. <laughs> one of the things we talk about around mindset is a solid emotional platform, which is why each morning I do my mad for more meditation. I've got into meditation a lot in the last few years, Mickey Boy. I mean, people have often called me a guru. I say I am not your guru. Uh, Anthony Robbins stole that title from me, uh, <laughs> made a lot of money on his Netflix from that. Uh, but I am not. I was not the guru before he was not the guru. Gotcha. You know? I mean, you're not a guru. No. You're, you're close to a guru. I like the T-shirt, by the way. Thank I you. love the idea of black belt. Black belt. Because when you start any martial arts, you start with a white belt. And then you work your way up to black belt. And so we call those micro steps, which is what we do at Everyday Empowerment Institute. Is we have what we call micro certification. You must reward progress. And now we know people are so addicted to the dopamine that comes from the regular hits of a mobile phone, you must be giving people regular hits. And so when we're talking mindset, we must have situations, and I know you do this beautifully, structured approaches to people stretching, stretching their comfort zone. Would you agree with that? Absolutely. Absolutely. The importance of stretching because it's death in the comfort zone, Mickey boy. And I'm calling you Mickey Boy because you know that I, I went to college uh, for a short time with my good friend Steve Jobs. God bless his soul. And Steve, Steve, Steve called, well, Steve, I call him Stevie Boy because my pappy used to call me Marky Boy, Marky Boy. Because I come from Eagle's Nest, Idaho, Eagle's Nest. My pappy ran the local gas station. Uh, he fixed people's cars. That, that's Monday to, 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 to Saturday. And then Sunday, he was the preacher at the local Apopiscal church. So on Monday to Saturday, he got people's cars going, but on Sunday, he got their lives going. And that was that's where you and I have picked up on this. M-A-D, make a difference. We say, you're put on this planet to make a difference. And in your case, to help people build. We're, that's where we're so interrelated here, because we're both in the business of building, constructing people's lives to realize their full Potential. Does that answer the question, Mick? I forgot what the question was, but I'm sure it did. Uh, you you reminded me of your pappy, uh, and and you know talk about mindset. I think he was very very instrumental in developing your mindset. What are some of the the lessons that would be worthwhile passing on to our listener that your well, pappy taught you? I'm glad you mentioned that, Mickey boy, because uh, 
I put this into a book we call Relate and Grow Rich. Now, some people say it's a ripoff of Think and Grow Rich, but no, <laughs> it's it's way newer than Think and Grow Rich. And I've got to tip my hat, if I had a hat, to the great Napoleon Hill and the great Andrew Carnegie, uh, great builders, great change makers in their time. But my pappy taught me a number of things. One of the things he taught me was this principle we call the R factor. The R factor. The R factor says we must relate. Relate. It's Life is all about relationships. And it's based on a principle, some science. It's actually on page 62 of the book. Page 62, which was done by uh, the great Tom Peters, raised this point when he said, why do customers stop doing business with any particular business? He said 15%, this is from a group called Boston Consulting, 15% leave because they find a better product. 15% leave because they find a cheaper product. 20% leave because of too little contact and individual attention. But 49% of people do not come back to your business or build any business because the attention they got was poor quality. In other words, almost 70% of the reason someone stops doing business with your business has got nothing to do with product or price, Mm. but the actual frequency times quality of the relationship that the people have. So there we go. Where do people learn how to build high quality relationships? And again, you don't learn it at kindergarten. You don't learn it in primary school. But that's what you and I do. We, we focus on a structured, systematic, scientific approach to building solid relationships. And that's what my pappy said. Marky boy, <laughs> it's all about relationships. Now, here today, I, you and I want to talk about the relationship your customers, your listeners have with their own mind. Mm. The relationship you have with your mind. Now, again, who teaches this? You know, the relationship we, because you go, what is, what? Now, builders understand that a building is made up of a number of components. Wood, concrete, wiring. What else? What else, Mickey boy? Pipes. Pipes. Tiles. Steel. Steel. It's made up of a number of components. And as a builder, you need to understand how those components integrate and work together. In fact, in the ideal world, in a synergistic one plus one plus one equals 25. That's what we want. So when it comes to the mind, the mind is made up of a number of components. There is the intellect, the intellect, which judges, reasons, discriminates. It thinks, the intellect. But then the mind is also made up of emotion, likes, dislikes. And in fact, what we know is too many people have what is known as a monkey mind. A monkey mind. You know what I'm saying when I say monkey mind? Mickey boy, have you heard of the monkey mind? Is it is it part of the whole setup with the reptilian brain and, and all of that sort of well, the reptilian brain, of course, that's interesting in itself because, as you know, there's the reptilian brain, there's the, the emotional brain, and then there's the higher order thinking. But the, the monkey mind is that part of the mind that keeps bouncing between Im- dead past and imagined future. Bang, 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 bouncing between like a tennis ball across that. Bang, 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 jumping. Out. What if I do this? And what do they say? And I shouldn't have said that yesterday. And oh, God, I've got this build up here tomorrow. And all this customer. Oh, oh, oh. And I'm running around like a mad monkey, like a two year old at a party, high on lollies. It's ridiculous. <laughs> so, one of the things that we teach in Mad for More, and I'm sure you teach something similar, is the importance of managing the mind. Mm-hmm. It's like going to the mind gymnasium and controlling. I mean, as you know, I'm a consultant to the International Olympic Committee, and we work with a whole range of athletes. I mean, Usain Bolt, good friend of mine. Um, gymnasts. Right? We love the gymnasts as well. We love the swimmers as well. You know, uh, 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 Michael Phelps, good friend of mine. Um, we love dealing with high performers. And all high performers understand, I mean, Ronaldo. Cristiano Ronaldo, a very good friend of mine, very good friend of mine. Uh, he loves his hair as much as I love my hair. Uh, he loves Pilates, by the way, Pilates. I love Pilates. I love Pilates. How's your six-pack going, by the way, Well, it's, boy? it's there. It's just hidden. Camouflage six-pack. I like <laughs> that. I like that. Now, one of the things we teach, not only relationship with the mind, but the relationship with high performance, because what we can do is we can model 
high performance. In fact, we call it deconstructing excellence. Deconstructing excellence. The great, the great coach uh, in the U.S. and I've forgotten his name. The Green Bay Packers. Think of his name. Think of his name. Think of his name. He said, "We <laughs> cannot catch perfection." But we can catch excellence. Wasn't Vince Lombardi, was it? Vince Lombardi. That's it. We chase perfection and we catch excellence. And that's what we do in our Mad for More program. Chase perfection, catch excellence. But one of the things in chasing perfection and catching excellence is modeling high performance mindset. Mm. Modeling high performance mindset. And that's where we talk about mm, power. Mmm, power. Mmm. Very yogic. Mm. Can you just do, join it with me? I, well, I mm. did it just but like mm. you, you encouraged me to do it before you even said that. I went, mmm. Mmm, there's something, in, well, there's something in it. It's a yogic approach. <laughs> a very yogic approach to high performance. A yogic approach to building mindset, building business. You know, it's, yeah. I, I'm still working on myself on a daily basis, Mickey Boy. I don't know about yourself. Yes, absolutely. I, I'm still an evolving creature. I know some people find that hard to believe, <laughs> but I am still an evolving human being. And I think it's very important that all of your clients, all of your listeners realize, yes, there's all this information you know, you know. You know, you know, there's things about building. You know, they know there's things about marketing. But, you know, you also know there's things you don't know. Yeah, okay, there's things I don't know about marketing. There's things I don't know. But I know a lot still. I know a lot. When your ego is attached to what you know, that is the beginning of the end. You must attach yourself, associate yourself with what you don't even know you don't even know. You see, because you probably come across those people who say, I've been to college. I've <laughs> got my degree. I don't need to know anymore. I know it all. In fact, I'm so full of it. <laughs> you know the ones, you know those kind of people, Mickey Boy? Oh, they, I don't know they, too many of them, but I, I know who you're talking about. Well, it's I'm sure you screen, you screen them out of your program because you don't need know-it-alls. In exactly fact, right. one of my good friends, the new chief exec at um, Microsoft, he said, I was reading one of my children's books to my kids the other day, and he said, in the book, there's a character who is a know-it-all. There was a know-it-all character, but there was a learn-it-all character. And, of course, in the book, the person who does the best is the learn-it-all, not the know-it-all. And uh, I think it's a great metaphor. It's a great metaphor. Don't be a know-it-all because you're full of it. <laughs> be a learn-it-all. Stay green and growing, which, by the way, is why part of the logo of Everyday Empowerment Institute is green, because... It's about stay green and growing. As besides, of course, our commitment to nature and, and climate change and, you know, climate change, let's hope that all goes well over there in Europe. Uh, you know, <laughs> the French president and poor S Scott Morrison. Uh, poor Scott, you think, poor Scott, he, I've told him he needs more hair. You know, that hair. I mean, I like your hair because you've done the, Number one, Mickey Boy. A hair just is very important. Just ready for this Did call. You just, oh, fantastic. Which, by the way, when we're talking relationship, in the book we talk about relationship with time, relationship with money, relationship with customers, but I've done a bonus chapter. Chapter number 14 is your relationship with hair. Bonus chapter 14, <laughs> relationship with hair. Because there's a strong relationship between success and hair. And when I say success in hair, I mean success and either having a good full head of hair, like, you know, the great Bill Clinton or, uh, you know, the great J JFK, uh, or no hair. Hair or no hair, but not comb over. <laughs> no. There's not a strong relationship with comb over and <laughs> success. So we say you, you must make a decision. There's what goes on inside the mind and there's what goes on outside the mind. And I know a lot of people's big money in fertilizing heads. You know, putting that stuff on hair. People take testosterone. They get more hair on their back than they do on their head. You know, but, but, but you, Mickey, you've done the right thing. You've done the number one. And it's not like you're losing that much anyway. I like it. It's quite nice. Yeah, I used to have a mullet. 
What, last week, last month, <laughs> last year? When did you... No, in my wedding photos. I had a mullet oh, and, a, no. and a handlebar moustache. Oh, that... But... Were you living in Tasmania at the time? No, no, I was in Sydney, but it was cool at that stage. It was some wow. time ago. That was a long time ago, wasn't it? That, that's when that Warwick Kappa used to wear very short shorts. <laughs> that's, that's right. Sydney Swans. I was in Sydney days. when the Sydney Swans came to Sydney and Warwick was uh, in the team. And, uh, oh, yeah. And, and Dr. Edelston owned the team and used to drive the pink Ferrari or whatever it well, was. Well, he had that young wife and Warwick Kappa, as I understand it, was a very good friend of hers. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know about that. No, I don't know about that either. But, but speaking uh, about good friends. Yes. Uh, and I just needed to, you know, just. We'll speak amongst ourselves. Don't worry about the listener. We've got a very good mutual friend, and I needed to check in on his general health and well-being. His name's Lee Farnell. He's part of the Institute, and he was responsible. Well, I've got to give him everlasting um, thanks because he introduced uh, me to you. Well, Farnell, uh, yeah, of course, the history goes, I was on the internet late one night, and... <laughs> these photographs started bouncing back and forth that I was got interested in. And I, I traced the person through. And this guy, Farnell, he was the one that actually introduced me to the R-Factor, R-Factor system. And, and in fact, we got so close that uh, we jointly agreed, we did joint licensing arrangements where, where uh, I used some of his R-Factor material and he uses some of my mad for more material and we've actually built up quite a strong relationship over the years non-physical non-physical <laughs> you know our, our wives know each other we've we've toured together from time to time and uh you know people like farnell i mean he's he's good he's 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 australian of course he ha in his case he has no hair no. he has absolutely no hair anyway uh, uh, no uh, and he's he's a little more boring than me but <laughs> other than that uh, he's a lovely fellow he's a lovely fellow uh, funnily enough, his pappy also worked in a gas station. Really? He was a motor mechanic, Farnell says, a motor mechanic. Uh, and he came from a place called Eagle Hawk in uh, 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 Victoria, uh, whereas I came from a place called Eagle's Nest. Similar, we got so many things yeah. in, in common. Uh, uh, his wife looks very Irish, whereas my wife looks very Spanish. Uh, so there's a lot of things in common. And we both love the color blue, I've got to say. And some people say to me, Morehouse, why do you wear blue? Well, many of you have heard of the book uh, Blue Ocean Strategy. Blue yes. Ocean Strategy, which says, Blue Ocean Strategy says you must stand out. Yep. You must give more value and you must stand out. And so that's why I'm, I, am, I am like the walking, living, breathing epitome of Blue Ocean. Stand out, be different, uh, be great value, which is what I make a difference. Uh, but more to the point, some have even said, Morehouse, you are like a walking, living, breathing piece of corporate Viagra. <laughs> you go into organizations that are just, you know, they're there, but they're not quite there. And within a very short period of time, <laughs> things change. Things change. The people are walking around Microsoft, Apple going, more, 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 more houses is giving me more. I've never felt this good. Oh, yeah. And the graph. You've seen, you've seen the share price, the Microsoft share price. You've seen, actually, you know, Elon Musk is a good friend of mine, of course, and a trillion-dollar company the other day. Uh, of course, needless to say, one of the things, you, you might do this with your client as well. What I do when I go into my organizations, I say there must be skin in the game. There must be skin in the game. And so uh, when I say skin in the game, I mean they pay me uh, skin. <laughs> but at the same time, I'm only too happy to take share options. And so I take share options. So you can imagine uh, when Stevie asked me to come back and help him out at Apple. Uh, I said, not a problem, but I do want share options, Stevie. This is not a problem. Apple's worth almost nothing at the moment because, uh, you know, they kicked him out in 1998, came back, and that's when he got me back involved with Apple. He said, Monkey Boy, you know, what, what should I do? And I said, Stevie, if you remember, in the old days at college, way back from Think and Grow Rich days, he says, think as you think, so you will be... As you be, so you will have. So if you want to have different, you must be different. And if you want to be different, you must think different. So at Apple, if you want to have different, you've got to think different. He goes, that's it, monkey boy. That's going to be our motto from now on. Think different. Well, I said, straight away. Straight away. 
I have added value to the business and therefore give me the share options. Well, as you can imagine, uh, I've done very well out of those share options and I've done very well out of share options at Tesla, Microsoft, uh, uh, SpaceX, uh, SpaceX. I mean, you know, uh, job, uh, 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 Elon-y boy, Elon. it's, it's, it doesn't really run off the tongue, no, Elon-y boy. Musky boy, musky boy, musky, musky boy. Musky boy, <laughs> musky boy, musky boy, musky boy. And by the way, he's got a nice set of hair too. Uh, he does a good job with his hair. Are you uh, going to go to space? Well, he's asked me that. Musky boy said, you know, musky boy, do you want to get into space? I said, I'll tell you what, I'll go in after you go in. And I've got to say, by the way, you may have watched that recent documentary on Netflix, uh, uh, Jacob Isaacson talking about Countdown, yep. the, um, the, the into space with the, the, the volunteers. They yes. raised $200 million. Yeah, well, that was my idea. Team inspiration. I said to him, if you're going to go into space, do some good. Make a difference. You know, if you're going to go big, go big. Because he was going to raise $20 million or something. I said, Put another zero on the end of that. <laughs> do something good with your life. And that's what he did. I mean, it's just a fantastic story. And, of course, I've got some share options in that business as well. But that's so okay. You'd be getting invitations to go to space all over the place. How hard is it to choose whether you're going to go with Musky Boy or Jeff? Like well, you would have been asked by both. Well, you see, that, this in itself is a great point, Mickey Boy, because one of the things we want to be doing is not only exploring outer space, we want to be exploring uh, inner space. <laughs> inner space is where the action is. Inner space, because it's all very well exploring outer space and getting on Mars, but if you're not happy and not realizing your full potential on the inside, what a waste, what an empty space, an empty universe. So we say, let's explore inner space. So when we talk about make a difference, we don't just mean make a difference in the external world and outer space, we want to be making a difference with inner engineering. We call it inner engineering, inner world engineering. And that's part of the R Factor and the Mad for More program. And I'm, I'm sure that, that the sorts of things you do, because again, when and where do people learn how to engineer and re-engineer their inner world? Where did you learn? Who taught you, Mickey Boy? Well, about these things? a raft of them. Um, you've been a, an, an incredible influence. Thank you. Um, some minor influences would be like the Stephen Coveys and Tony Robbinses. Yes. But, uh, but you've been the primary one. Well, you see, you know, Covey, good, no hair. Robbins, good head of hair. Uh, what <laughs> often happens with these programs is they say great things, but it's not what I would call deliberate practice. It, you know, Aristotle said, Aristotle said, Aristotle said, we are what we repeatedly do. Excellence then is not an act, but a habit. Mm. So what we've done, and Farnell's done at Everyday Empowerment Institute, is gone, what are the small steps on a daily basis the small, deliberate practice. This is what Ronaldo does. What is, you know, look, it's like Usain Bolt said, I hate training, but I love winning. <laughs> so if, you, I've, 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 if I want to win, I've got to train. It does, you can't have the winning without the training. I mean, people try it, it doesn't work. Mm. So, so it's like, what do I do on a daily basis, deliberate? Now, the other thing we talk about at Everyday Empowerment Institute is not only what are the habits, but what is the ecosystem the ecosystem the ecosystem because french talk about the french there's a french proverb which the, the french president may or may not be aware of the forest shapes the tree now if you're french you'd say that with a french accent the forest <laughs> shapes the tree the, fo the forest <laughs> shapes the tree now the point is this the forest shapes the tree the ecosystem the village raises the child. Mm. And in your case, you've got an ecosystem for builders, an ecosystem for builders to become excellent. Is that true, yes or no? Yes. Yes. And what we do across a range of industries is just that, is create ecosystems for excellence in all sorts of industries, professional services, you know, IT, cars, marketing. Because the point is this, Human beings, human beings are not selective. In fact, we say often they're unconscious. They're asleep at the wheel. Mm. 
They're asleep at the wheel of the ecosystem they choose or don't choose or just end up being in. So we say become conscious, become conscious, become awake at the wheel. So here we're saying to your people, don't just be awake at the wheel in terms of marketing, not in terms of awake at the wheel in terms of cash flow, in terms of awake at the wheel in terms of people we recruit, awake at the wheel in terms of IO customer, awake at the wheel as to what is going on between your ears. Am I, am I adding any value here? Incredible value, incredible value. But, uh, you know, as, as the, uh, the well-known saying says, you know, all good things must come to an end. And unfortunately, we, we, we have run out of, we've run out of the satellite time. Oh, um, yeah. I know it's your own satellite, but... Um, wow, you know, and Musky Boy's got quite a few satellites these days, but I understand. <laughs> time is not only money, time is irreplaceable. As I say, life begins, life ends. There's only time, there's, just a, there's a finite amount of time, so we must be precious, which is, again, I'm sure you teach time management, because we say, there's not such a thing as time management, it's called self-management, my friend. Self-management, 168 hours in the week. Break it down into five-minute chunks. That's what I do. And we've, we've just used up four of those chunks. <laughs> just an endless source of value. Uh, what, what, what do people need to know to be able to uh, bathe in your glory further, uh, to, to find more of your information, to perhaps even um, to, to get in touch with the Institute, maybe talk to Lee? What, what's the story? Well, there's a number of things they can do. First of all, they can go to the Marky Boy Morehouse uh, Facebook page and you can check out some of the, the impact we had right across Asia, 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 China, China, <laughs> China, China. We was in China, we are in China. Uh, one, you can go to the Marky Boy Morehouse. You can go to the Everyday Empowerment Institute uh, LinkedIn page. The website is almost up and running. It's about to be launched. Uh, Farnell, you can touch base with Farnell via his LinkedIn page or his Facebook page, Lee Farnell, F-A-R-N-E-L-L. -L. Uh, and of course, uh, you can look up, you know, look up the uh, Relate and Grow Rich, that's on Amazon or uh, Kindle or one of those places. Um, so yeah, Farnell on LinkedIn, uh, on Facebook, Every Empowerment Institute on Facebook, on LinkedIn. And uh, please, we love working with you guys, Mickey. We love builders. Where would we be without builders? We'd be living in caves still. Yeah, you know? yeah you'd be under a tree somewhere but start with the foundation start with the foundation the foundation between the years to make a decision to make a difference and go mad for more professor mark morehouse it's been an absolute privilege and an honor to have you uh on the builders business success podcast hopefully we'll be talking to you again at some stage in your future uh and we'll be uh we'll watch be watching your progress and uh impact on the globe with interest so we appreciate you putting your time and sharing your wisdom with us thank you very much Ma, thank you very much Mickey boy and thank you to all your guests i look forward to seeing you at some point in the future remember when you see the color blue think of morehouse and corporate viagra <laughs> thank you professor thank you my friend namaste <laughs> so i hope you enjoyed that episode of builders business success podcast before we go, I want to share with you some really, 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 that's three reallys, exciting news. Um, we've created or had our own app built. It's called the Builder's Toolshed. And the whole idea of the Builder's Toolshed is it is just an environment just for builders uh, and potentially your sub trades if you want to invite them along. The reason that we created this environment, this space, this app, is because in the past we've been using email and we've been using Facebook groups. And, and I get it that, that there are just many people that don't like Facebook. They're leaving Facebook. Uh, there are that many notifications if you belong to a Facebook group and it's just ad after ad and it's incredibly distracting and time wasting so we decided to invest in creating our own space and it's an app that has absolutely everything in it so we're going to be putting the podcast in the app we're going to be putting a whole lot of resources in the app you're going to be there with other like-minded builders who are success focused and the best bit is you won't have any of the distractions and all of the emails and notifications that go along with being in a Facebook group or being on an email mailing list. It's just for builders, 
the only thing that you'll be seeing and talking about is stuff that will help you build your business. So I really encourage you to come and join us in the Builder's Toolshed. So we'll put some links in the comment section. If you're watching this on YouTube, it'll be in the description. Or you can simply go to the Apple App Store and search for the Builder's Toolshed. Or you can do the same thing with the Google Play Store. So you just go search for the app. We'll have our normal little uh, logo there. You'll see that. And you can download it on your phone or you can um, open up, up the, uh, the app on your computer as well. So I really encourage you to come and join us in the Builder's Toolshed. There's going to be a lot of cool things. You'll be able to ask questions. Uh, we'll be doing some live Q&As, all sorts of fun stuff. We'll be continually improving and adding things to the space. And it's kind of going to be driven by you. So you need to jump in there, uh, make your suggestions, ask your questions, ask for what resources that would help you build the business the way you want your business to be built. And we'll do our very best to make sure it appears in that environment. So I'll see you in the Builder's Toolshed uh, and I'll talk to you again in another episode of the Builder's Business Success Podcast. I'm Mick Hawes. Bye for now. Okay, that's the podcast. If you have a question or want to know how Mick can help with your building business, email your request to mick at buildersbusinessblackbelt.com.au. Do it. Do it now.